Now, I've given you a set of numbers on this sheet, and I'm just going to highlight a couple of them by way of introduction to our next speaker. Let's go down to Genesee County. 2.9 Genesee County, where, where Flint is located. For the county as a whole, just under $3 billion in cost for the Afghan-Iraq war. The yearly total cost to Genesee County, the annual ongoing total military budget cost is about $1.2 billion. Keep that in mind when you hear our next speaker. For Flint, the Afghan-Iraq war has already cost about $324 million. Without knowing what our next speaker is going to say, I, I will hazard a guess that if he had half of that money, uh, Flint would not need an emergency uh, manager. And on an ongoing annual basis, about $138 million per year for Flint, Flint City, for war costs. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce our next speaker, who I'm very grateful was, was willing to, to to join us today, uh, Jerry Ambrose, who is Director of Finance for the City of Flint, and I'll let him pick up and give us perspective on the, the Emergency Manager Act and what it's what it's like to be a finance manager in in a city under uh, an emergency emergency manager. Jerry, take it away. Thank you. Good afternoon. How are you? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm Jerry Ambrose. I'm uh, the financial advisor to the emergency manager, Mike Brown, in Flint. I'm on the ground in Flint. I've been there since uh, December. Uh, I came from, uh, previous to coming to Flint, I was the chief of staff and finance director for Mayor Burge Monero. Prior to that, I was 20-some uh, years in Bingham County. Uh, serving as the controller there. So my life is uh, pretty much finance, and um, so when I think about the problems that we're facing today, they they're really are in that context. I appreciate Lynn's comments uh, about whether, uh, you know, whether our ladder is leaning against the wrong wall, and that is, uh, are we solving the, the wrong problem? And, and I observe, you know, that generally there are very wrong, simple answers to very complex issues. And perhaps having a, the EM statute the way it is is one of those, but perhaps also uh, uh, repealing that without some alternate solution is likewise a wrong, simple answer to a complex issue. These are very complex issues. And frankly, I've neither, neither been an advocate for or against the statute. My, finance, my, my background has been finance, I came to, I decided to go to Flint to work with Mike Brown because Mike Brown, as the EM there, is, is operating with a different model uh, than, than uh, the, the EM in Benton Harbor. I know nothing about uh, what's going on in, in uh, Benton Harbor. What I know is, but I will just say that it's the same statute being applied in a couple of different situations. Mike Brown is from Flint. Mike Brown was involved in Flint government for a while. He's been involved with nonprofits in Flint, a, a group called reinventflint.org, uh, which is a group of folks really thinking about the future sustainability of the city of Flint. And that's why I said I would go with Mike, because Mike wasn't going in there as, as the guy there to fix the financial problem and get out. Mike was the, is there because he's committed to Flint, he's committed it to being successful in the future, and so his actions are designed to do that. Um, the, so in, in part of that, I would just say, uh, uh, you know, when, when the EM takes over, there are certain things that happen by statute. The salary of the, the mayor goes to zero. The salary of the council goes to zero. Uh, the, the, uh, the EM is given full administrative control of the city. Uh, but there are some limitations. Uh, the, for example, he cannot commit to expenditures in excess of $50,000 without the approval from, from the state. And I would say before the EM is appointed, there are a number of steps that go through. 
Number one, there is a financial review team come in, that comes in and does a detailed review and looks at the financial situation and compares it to set, pri set criteria in the statute and then makes a recommendation to the governor about their findings. <coughs> uh, second, following that, the governor making a preliminary recommendation has the obligation uh, to talk with the city authorities, with the city council and the mayor, to see if it's possible to develop a consent agreement whereby the city would continue to operate uh, with its mayor and with the council under a, a set of agreement that moves folks forward. In the case of Flint, the Flint City Council did not have the votes to do that. Um, and, and, and so, and my point is that, that there is, that, that when you get the situation where the, the, uh, uh, the uh, governor appoints a financial manager or an emergency manager, it's not the first thing, it's not the most desirable, it's the last step in a process. And even beyond that, the municipality has the uh, legal authority to challenge the governor's determination in court. So this is not something that's done lightly. But um, I'm waiting for that bell to ring really quickly. So let me just tell you, uh, generally, the problems in Flint uh, come from a city that once had 80,000 General Motors workers and now has 6,000 General Motors workers. It has one of the highest poverty rates in the city. It has 30%, uh, 30, 40% of its population lives below the poverty level. Uh, the, as the, as the, uh, uh, the housing stock has diminished, the values have, have diminished, uh, the revenues supporting the uh, city have diminished. In the midst of a great recession, property tax revenues dropped, income tax revenues dropped, state shared revenues dropped, uh, people became unemployed, uh, the demand for social services became much higher, uh, and it gets to be an impossible situation to manage financially. <coughs> Some cities are able to do that better than others. In Flint, it didn't work well. Uh, Flint actually had an emergency manager back in 1992, if I remember correctly. It was there for a couple of years. Uh, the, uh, the, the, the budget got balanced. Uh, the manager left with a plan that would sustain solvency. And here we are back in Flint in another uh, four or five years with an emergency manager again, because again, the city is broke. When it really comes down to it, these folks, you know, emergency managers are not in place unless the institution is broke. And when we say we're broke, that means we're wondering whether there's money to make payroll. We're wondering whether there's money to turn on the lights. We've cut the, the police force is down to about 30% of where it used to be. The fire force is down by 50%. Uh, there are no, there's no money for investments in the sewer, in the water. The parks are overgrown. I mean, it is, it is, a, it is a terrible situation, and, and one cannot just cut their way out of that. Uh, and I think that that's the challenge that we have right now. We've come in again, uh, Mike was appointed at the uh, in 1st of December. He's been there about seven weeks. We're trying to get our hands around how bad the finances are. There was an audit done. Uh, we know where there are lots of deficits, so we're thinking about the next year. Uh, we know that finding money is going to be a challenge, and we're going to have to make a lot of uh, really tough choices. Um, but the real challenge, I think, and we're going to find out in the next you know, six to eight weeks, we're going to find out whether it's even possible with the money that, that Flint has, can you have a government, can you have a community that has the chance of being sustainable enough that it, that it can survive, that it can attract people, that it can attract businesses in the future. Uh, and, and I think if whoever's in place, if they don't have that view of making Flint or any city a sustainable uh, entity into the future, it's gonna fail again. So it's a challenge, it's not, I mean, there's no simple answer to this. I think, and Lynn, I really appreciate your comments we were talking, talking back there when we talked about the ladder leaning against, against the, the wrong wall. The, the system for financing municipal government in Michigan across the state is broke. And if one wants to make a city sustainable in the future, we need to, as a state, address that head on and talk about the fact you can't finance municipal, municipal governments the, the way that they are being financed right now. 
So uh, a couple of things in terms of Flint and, and municipalities across the state, as I said, you know, incomes drop with property tax, income tax, state shared revenues, all just dropping in, dropping at a time when the demand is, is greatest. And at the same time, we are dealing with decisions made by local government bodies in the past as they dealt with wages, salaries, pension benefits, and health care costs, all things that are have been, uh, you know, bargained, uh, collectively given uh, in good faith over, over time, but uh, unfortunately with, with not full understanding of the cost implications of that. And so we're all dealing with, uh, with, with the pressures on the income side and on the expense side and still trying to make that community sustainable for the future. Uh, I think the, the chance of success uh, in Flint, I hope, is, is positive because you've got folks that are committed to it. You have an EM in Flint, I want to talk just a little bit about this, but the EM in, in Flint, uh, although salaries of mayor and council went to zero and he could have put them in the basement, did not do that, excuse me, they uh, restored the salary of the salary of the, of the mayor to about half of what it was, restored the salary of the council, has involved them in, in many different activities. Uh, the, the EM is re required to have a, uh, an advisory council that he works with. That includes in Flint, that includes the mayor and uh, a council member plus three members of the public as he's required to do by statute. So, I'm done. Thank you.